In this video, I'm gonna talk about dividend reinvestment plans, what they are at a basic level, and five key features that I think you should know about. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sanjay and I make videos on personal finance investing with an Australian context. So let's get into it. So what is a dividend reinvestment plan? Well, it's basically where a company has said, instead of getting paid your dividends out as cash, you can decide to reinvest them directly back into the company and get more shares. Now, not all companies will have dividend reinvestment plans. It's completely optional for companies to do and set it up. Well, actually not all companies will even pay out dividends. Sometimes they won't even bother because they want to reinvest the money within themselves. Another aspect of DRPs is you don't have to fully participate in them, meaning you can say you only want a certain portion of your shares to be used for a dividend reinvestment plan and you want the other half to be paid out as cash. So you can decide to have like 5% of your shares allocated into a drip plan or 100% of your shares allocated into a drip plan and you can change it over time. So it's very flexible and that's how they're usually being set up. Now for some of you, you might be wondering, Sanji, I get paid dividends, but the amount of money I get paid in dividends is so small compared to what the actual price of the share is. For example, you may only get paid 13, 20, $15 in dividends, but the actual company you hold shares in, the monetary value of each share is like $50, $60. And you're thinking, well, what happens to that balance of money? Well, what basically happens is the company will say, okay, you've earned $15 in dividends. We know that's not enough for you to actually buy a share. What we're going to do is hold that money in a non-interest paying account until you actually have enough money and then we'll allocate a share on your behalf. So let's now talk about five other key features that you should know about when it comes to dividend reinvestment plan. Now, the first and most common thing called out when it comes to dividend reinvestment plans is the amount of money that you'll save in brokerage if you decide to have your drip turn on. Now, what I mean by this is say you're earning $500 a year in dividends and you want to reinvest that. And if you didn't have a drip plan turned on, you'd basically get your money and then you'd have to go to your broker and then pay a brokerage fee to buy $500 a gain worth of shares in that same company. Whereas if you have a drip plan turned on, whenever you earn dividends, that money gets used straight away to buy shares on your behalf without you having to pay any transaction fees. So no brokerage fees, no other types of fees. The companies will usually state this in their website and in the documentation, but they'll make it very clear that you don't have to pay any fees to get your new shares. So that's a nice little saving when it comes to transaction costs, because sometimes transaction costs can be one of the biggest expenses when you're investing in shares. Now, another feature is drip discounts. So this is where a company may say, if you decide to participate in our dividend reinvestment plan, we'll allocate those shares at a 2.5% discount or some kind of discount to what the shares are currently trading at. Now, this can be quite attractive if you're someone like me and you're not really looking to get that cash. You're not looking for that cash flow now and having a drip plan that is also discounted can be quite attractive because you're basically saving money both in terms of the brokerage that we just talked about but also just in terms of entering the market at a 2.5% discount, which is fantastic. Now, something else to call out is the fact that some dividend reinvestment plans will have requirements around your minimum holdings that you need to have. Now, I got caught up in this because I didn't read the documentation clearly for one of the companies I have a drip plan set up in. And I was making a big fuss on Instagram saying, oh, I, I screwed up, I didn't have my dividend reinvestment plan thing turned on, I got paid out in cash how silly all of this. And when I actually looked into it and I called up the investor center and I said, you know, I thought I had actually turned it on. What happened? Was it me? Did I do something wrong? Or was it you? Did you guys screw up? They actually took me through the documentation. And they noted that one of the requirements for this particular company was you needed to have a minimum of 500 shares in the company before they would consider you eligible for the drip plan. Now, something else you should know, but you should definitely clarify with your accountant is tax treatments when it comes to dividend reinvestment plans. Now, if you're getting paid out in cash, it's pretty straightforward. You know that you need to allocate that to your tax return. But you might be wondering, if you get paid out dividends in drip form, if you get paid out dividends in shares, does that impact how you treat your taxes? And the answer to that is no. The Australian Taxation Organisation, to my knowledge, but you should definitely confirm this with your tax accountant, treats dividends earned as cash or as dividend reinvestment plans as being the same. So there's no tax saving that you can make whether you decide to go into a drip plan or get paid out in cash. It's being treated the same by the tax office. Confirm that with your accountant if you want to, but that's generally my understanding of it all. 
The final thing I wanted to call out is dividend reinvestment plans are how you can really compound your wealth over time. Often on the internet, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, some blog, you'll often see these examples where someone will say, if you had invested $5,000 in 1901 and you had held on to it in the S&P 500 all the way through till you know, 2020, you'd have like $100 million. Now I'm intentionally being obtuse and I'm being exaggerate. I'm exaggerating this a bit. But to make the point that a lot of these examples where they talk about compounding your wealth, what they're talking about there is to some extent the equivalent of having a dividend reinvestment plan turned on. Because you can't really compound your wealth if you're taking your dividends that you get paid out and using that for other things. That's not compounding. What compounding is, is essentially any benefits you get from your investment, you put straight back in to buying more of that investment. And instead of holding it as cash and using that to pay off your everyday expenses or whatever it is, you use those proceeds from your investment to buy more of that investment. And then it compounds and builds up over time. Now for me, when it comes to my holdings in terms of individual shares or index funds, when it comes to dividends, I always have drip plans turned on if they're available. And that's mainly because I don't need the income from my investments right now. I don't need that cash that they pay out in dividends. I would rather that money get used to build up my current shareholding in the company or in the index fund. Now down the track, as I get older and I need to rely more on my income from my investments rather than my full-time job, I might change some of those settings that I have set up in my dividends where I'd say, I only want half my dividends to be reinvested and I want the other half to be paid out to me as cash because I actually need some of that money to live on. That may change, but broadly speaking for the next at least 15, 20, maybe even 30 years, I don't know, I'm gonna keep my drip plans turned on just because I wanna build up my investment in a lot of these companies and indexes. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I love hearing from you guys, even if it's just, you know, you enjoy the video or you found it completely useless, happy to hear from you, love the feedback. And I've also just realized I use my hands a lot. So I do apologize that this entire video, if I've done a lot of this and talked a lot with my hands, I'm working on it. I'll just have to keep my hand down, down in the future. Now I thought I'd also recommend another video that's been done by someone incredibly smart, much smarter than me, on the area of dividends and investments. And it's this video by Ben Felix where he actually titles it The Irrelevance of Dividends. But I think you should have a look at it and it's some interesting insights that he shares. And I always like sharing other videos that I think you guys should look into to get a bit more of a broader understanding of this topic around personal finance and investing. If you enjoyed the video guys, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. What it basically does is it tells the YouTube algorithm that you've liked this video and you'd like to see more videos along these lines and it will help you see more videos from me and from other people. But another way to see videos from me is to subscribe for future content like this. I do weekly videos on personal finance and investing, especially with an Australian context and I think you might enjoy that. I'm actually planning on doing a video in the future on savings ratios. Now I've done a video about how I save quite a lot and I wanted to bring up this whole topic around how to actually calculate your savings ratio because I think there's a bit of uncertainty around it or there's just no clarity around what is the denominator? What do you actually define as what you compare your savings ratio with when it comes to your income? So I think you'll enjoy that. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.